Holy smokes. Long time no see. Here we go. This is going to be a yap session, an update of the F10, where it's been, where I've been last couple months. To start things off, I got my phone here just to keep tabs of what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's start with September, starting in September. September, it started getting cooler here. I had the opportunity to go home to Florida and work while I was down there. So I drove the 175,000 mile BMW down there. Sounds crazy, but it was actually a flawless drive. Um, no issues until I got down there. Now, once I was down there, I started having an electrical issue where I would turn the car off and it would immediately shut everything off. It wouldn't go into auxiliary. It wouldn't leave the radio on or anything for a couple minutes, you know, until you open a door type thing. I start with those three, three things. So the battery alternator or the starter, one of those three, but I started with the battery. So that was the first thing I replaced when I was down there. Um, the battery I got from, yeah, AutoZone, it was $276. Um, now this car is a 2012, it is 2024. When I did it, it was 2023. When I did the battery, that battery was OEM. That was the OEM battery in the car. So that's a long time. So that it was about time I switched the battery anyways. So that not a big deal. I thought that was going to solve all my problems, but after the battery change, it drove fine for a little bit, but then it kept saying, weak battery or need to charge battery it gets that you know that ding that notification on the car um the warning that you need to charge the battery and it was doing the same thing to where i would turn the car off and it would just shut completely off it wouldn't stay on or i couldn't access auxiliary mode without being on a trickle charger so i went to the next thing i was like all right let's see if it's the alternator so I noticed that the belt tensioner was bouncing a little bit. It was a little worn out. So I got the alternator tested. The alternator tested good, but there was an issue. It was over, over spinning. It was generating more power than it should, and it was fluctuating. So it was throwing off all the computer systems. So I knew it had to be the belt tensioner. So I started off with that. I got that kit, the belt tensioner kit off of FCP Euro for about a hundred and. 30 or 140 bucks or something like that. Got it like that, around that, and then I replaced it. So I thought, okay, all of my problems are gonna be solved after that because the alternator tested good. It was just a tensioner. So I replaced the tensioner, all the pulleys and everything, and it was still a problem. <laughs> so I couldn't win in this situation. So I was like, all right, it's definitely not the starter at this point. It is definitely the alternator that is not charging or maintaining the charge. So what I did was I went on Rock Auto of all places, found a cheap but like well-rated um, alternator to replace mine, and that's what I threw in. I think I paid a hundred and thirty dollars, hundred forty dollars for that alternator. No, it was a hundred and hundred fifty-seven dollars. I remember now. It was one hundred fifty-seven dollars for that alternator. Replaced it, threw it in. Then charged the battery, threw it on a trickle charger overnight, and all my problems were solved. So that was my electrical rabbit hole that I had to chase. And all my problems are gone with that. That pertained to that. And just to be clear, that problem started in September and didn't end until January where I replaced the alternator. I replaced the battery in November, replaced the tensioner in November, I still had that problem, but I knew I was coming back up to Wisconsin and didn't want to spend the money on the alternator right away. So I drove the car up here and solved that problem up here by replacing the alternator in January. And on to the next thing I had to do. I took advantage of the warm weather down there and I went ahead and took care of my brakes. Now, all four corners, I did brakes and rotors or brake pads and rotors. And while I was in there, I was like, mm, let's get rid of this nasty red color that was like paint was chipping on the brake calipers. I really didn't like the red anyways. I think a lot of cars these days, if they're a sports car, have red brake calipers. And I wanted to steer away from that. And I know that BMW, like the M cars, have a blue caliper. It's like a very special type of blue. I didn't want to do that either. So I went ahead and painted them yellow. Um, I just used rattle cans to do the job. I got high temp 
um, high temp uh, yellow paint and then high temp clear and knocked it out in just a couple of hours uh, in the driveway. Not a big deal. So I went ahead and do that. All the brakes cost me just under $600. Um, I did go with the R1 Concepts um, off of Rock Auto. I don't think I need anything special. This car will never see the track at all. So, I mean, daily driving, just wanted something good, reliable, and cost effective. That was a big thing. Also, if you look back um, a couple videos, if I can find the clip, I'll insert it right here. When I bought the car, the car had a broken front bumper. Um, now it had a hole in the side, it was cracked. The previous owner drilled the splitter like into the bumper, like left the holes there. I mean, improper installment type thing. The rear bumper was just a non uh, M Sport bumper and same with the side skirts. Um, so I was kind of looking on Facebook Marketplace as the average car enthusiast does um, and a set of bumpers came up. So it was the M Sport front, rear bumper and side skirts um, for only a couple hundred bucks. And it was on the car, it was on a parts car in some dude's driveway in Tampa. And I was like, uh, do I really need it? They were silver. I was like, do I really need it? Do I want them really bad? I know that the front bumpers alone go for like, you know, six or 700, the rear bumpers a couple hundred, the side skirts are, you know, 150 each or whatever. So I was like, oh, this is a deal. I don't want to pass up. If they're clean, non-cracked and don't have any issues, then oh, perfect, it'll fit on the car. So took my car over there, pulled the parts off, threw them in the trunk, laid the seats down, had to jam them in there, got it done. Pulled them, up, <laughs> pulled them out of the driveway, um, laid them out in the grass. I was like, yes, okay, cool. Now the next step was I just gotta find somewhere or someone um, to paint these or a place that I can paint these myself. Luckily, I made a few calls, a couple of my buddies from down there. As I said, I'm from Florida, so I know a lot of people that are in a lot of different industries. So my buddy had a shop. He said, all right, if you buy the paint and the clear, Get the paint match or whatever I'll show you how I would paint them and you can help me and I won't charge you so it was a learning experience for me he taught me a lot um, but it was cool I got to do my own bumpers it turned out all right I, I wouldn't say it was the best <laughs> there's obviously a learning curve to body work and painting um, but the front the rear bumper the side skirts turned out amazing. The front bumper was a difficult part. I did miss uh, like one area with, when I was doing clear coat, but that's something I'm gonna touch up here pretty soon. Um, not the biggest deal, because I do think I wanna switch to, uh, is it a G, G30 style bumper or F90? I think it's an F90 style bumper, but I wanna switch to one of those. Um, I, I can't, I get confused on which bumper is which, but I want to switch to one of those. Okay, so while I was in there with the bumper and spray painting, if you notice, I have fog lights now. So I jacked those off the parts car too, um, which is cool. The car did, this car did come with fog lights, but the previous owner removed them when he did that M5 style bumper and just left the connectors in there. So, I mean, I like the car the way it looks with the fog lights, so why not have them? especially up here in Wisconsin where there's like no street lights whatsoever anywhere when you live out in the boonies. So great steal, my end. I painted, I went ahead and painted the inserts, the, the um, front bumper like little grill inserts to the same paint match. Um, that was difficult because I had to scuff every single piece. I also, while I was in there, I also re-cleared the beat up BMW logos that were on here. They're aftermarket from the previous owner. They were, the clear coat on them um, was sun faded. Um, so I just scuffed them down, sanded them a little bit, and then re-cleared them, and they look amazing now. Um, I do plan on replacing them anyways, but since I was doing it, doing it why not? Now we can talk about the drive back. Um, I did drive back up to Wisconsin before Christmas. The drive back was flawless, the, no issues on the way up here. I'm actually surprised on the gas mileage that this car gets. Um, 
you know, pretty cost effective on my pocket. My wallet is happy, so I'm happy. But when I did get back up here, I did park the car after driving it all the way up cross country. I did park the car for about a week. I did not drive it at all once I got up here, just unloaded my stuff and then started driving my wife's car around. Um, when I did go to drive the car again, I had no coolant. So you know, like I got a notification while I was driving that, you know, you have no coolant or coolant dangerously low. So I started to think is coolant mixing or am I leaking somewhere? So I went to O'Reilly's, I picked up a pressure tester kit, pressure tester kit and tested the coolant system and horrible. <laughs> the results of that test were horrible. I don't know what caused this or what um, could have been the issue it being an old car or whatever, but it was driving to totally fine, drove across country totally fine, but all of a sudden when I get home, everything decides to break on me. So <laughs> so I take the, friend, the fan shroud out and I pressurize the system and lo and behold, the radiator's cracked. Every single hose going from the thermostat to the block, the radiator to the auxiliary radiator, um, radiator to the thermostat, all those hoses are dry rotted. Um, and I had, was like, I have to replace them all. So I had no choice but to let the car sit because new, new radiator, all those hoses, everything, you're talking a couple grand, like just in parts. I was going to do it myself. I did do it myself. Um, it was pretty expensive right off the rip. It was about 1500 bucks to get all that all the parts just pertaining to that. Um, then I'll insert a clip here. I also realized that I was smelling some, you know, burning oil. So I started to investigate. I took the under tray off the car, let the car run, see where, you know, if there's anything dripping or like if I had an oil leak somewhere, but I kept smelling it. So I popped the hood while the car was running. And you can see in this clip, I do know I have a clip of it that oil was leaking onto my downpipe and just burning so lots of steam or you know fume smoke whatever you want to call it um was coming out of the engine bay and that smell horrible so i was like all right well now i have to do a valve cover uh, <laughs> so that was a whole nother thing just throw it on the list of things to do and then as every car guy says you know you do the while I'm in there, I might as well take care of this and this and this. So, yeah. So, that was what was next for me to do. So, fast forward about two weeks um, just to get all the parts in. It's about negative 10, negative 15 degrees outside. I'm in this garage that's not insulated whatsoever, nor is the garage door. I just had two little space heaters and a couple of lights and jack stands. Um, I replaced my radiator, all the hoses, the thermostat, the alternator, the valve cover, coil packs, and spark plugs on the car. As well as I, since I had everything off, I was was doing the, since I'm in there, I might as well replace this. I redid the oil filter uh, housing gaskets and the oil cooler gasket. Um, just to ensure that those aren't leaking either and those gaskets tend to fail and when they do fail It will mix coolant and oil. So you don't want that to happen um, So I just replaced everything resealed everything that I could um, Got the car back on the ground running driving perfectly fine There are a couple things I still need to do. I have a brand new uh, Rev is it Rev 9? Yeah, I have a Rev 9 intercooler um, this car does not have an upgraded intercooler yet, though it is stage two. So for me to go stage two plus, I got to have that intercooler in. I did both boost pipes. So the boost pipe and the charge pipe are done, um, by, uh, VRSF. Uh, so just got to get this intercooler installed. Then the car should be mint for now. And that just brings us here today. So if you stay through all that, <laughs> which I doubt anybody did. I appreciate it. Just drop a comment, like, subscribe.
and next video will be a lot more entertaining and a lot less yapping. Thank you.